Right now, you can get 10% off retail orders of comic supplies from bcwsupplies.com when you use the promo code SCOTTYD at checkout. And there's no space between Scotty and D. BCW Supplies. Protect. Store. Display. Book 1. Part 5. Skywalker Strikes. It is a period of renewed hope for the Rebellion. The evil Galactic Empire's greatest weapon, the Death Star, has been destroyed by the young rebel pilot, Luke Skywalker. But Skywalker knows he has a long way to go if he ever hopes to become a true Jedi. Seeking clues to his destiny, he has returned home to Tatooine. Meanwhile, Darth Vader is seeking answers of his own and has hired the notorious bounty hunter Boba Fett to track down the pilot who destroyed the Death Star. Hey Web World, Scotty D, thanks for stopping by to another video here in my comic book series on my channel. And if you want to watch the rest of the videos in the series, it's real simple to do so. All you have to do is go on over to my main YouTube channel page. Once you get over there, click on playlists. Inside of the playlist area, you're going to find comic book collecting. Click on that and all of the videos are right there in that playlist list it is that simple and if you want to reach out to me it is equally as simple you could email me or tweet me the email account scott at scottydonline.com the twitter account at scottydonline both of those are in the video description below for easy find and easy use as is the promo code for the savings over at bcwsupplies.com so definitely check out the video description below today we are here to talk about this comic right here this is marvel star wars number five the standard cover before we get started let me also show you the variant that i picked up this is the Marvel Star Wars number 5 action figure variant. This is the one for C-3PO, and you can see the, the variant print right up over here. I like how that's up there. It looks like the price tag that would have been on the backing board for the original action figure from Kenner for Star Wars back in the 70s. And that's what the action figure variants are all about, is they are commemorating the original series of Star Wars action figures from Kenner. And once you collected the original first set of action figures, you were able to send in your proof of purchases and get a Boba Fett action figure. And they honored that as well with a special limited print action cover variant for Boba Fett. And I've got all of the action figures up to this point, and I'm going to get all of them into my collection. Uh, and they span more than just Star Wars. They have an action figure variant in the Vader series as well as the Leia series. So you want to pay close attention to where those action figure variants are going to be released at and make sure you collect them all. So this is the C-3PO action figure variant right here. And this is the standard cover for Marvel Star Wars number 5. Very cool. We've got Han Solo right here, Princess Leia right here, Luke Skywalker right here. T being trailed by a TIE fighter back over here. A lot of stuff happening in this book. Book number 4 we left off on Tatooine. Tatooine uh, with some battle-torn Rodians, and uh, they were being questioned by Boba Fett about Obi-Wan, and we now join in book number five with Luke and R2-D2 returning to Tatooine under a hot double sun, and then a quick jump cut uh, to a dusk scene with Boba Fett on a rage hunt. And let me preface real fast, <clears throat> excuse me, that if you are a big Boba Fett fan, if you are a fan of the Dented Helmet Army, the fan of the Mandalorians, you are going to get your Fett fix in this book. <clears throat> but it's more than just Boba Fett. There's a lot happening in this particular comic book. I would dare say that there are three separate elements of this book that are happening uh, in parallel in this particular book. Uh, so you need to pay close attention to this uh, because this is not the first time we've seen a lot of these jump cuts happen. If you're not a fan of jump cuts, this book might get underneath your skin a little bit, but we've seen jump cuts happening in the Vader series and the, in the Leia series. So it just seems to be the norm uh, right now because they're trying to tell a whole lot in a very short amount of time before these series uh, are stopped. And we are introduced to the end of the year where we're going to be ramping up for uh, episode seven in the theaters. So uh, we, uh, we, we see Fett continuing his search uh, in the cantina that we're all familiar with. Some very familiar faces in the cantina. We know this cantina because this was in episode four, A New Hope, where Han shot first. Maybe you're a Greedo fan. Maybe you say Greedo shot first. I say Han shot first. I'd love to see your thoughts. Comment below. Let's have a little interactive discussion. Did 
Han shoot first or did Greedo shoot first? Because it happened right here in the cantina where Boba Fett's at right now. So it's kind of fun to kind of reminisce on that element right now of the Star Wars universe. Uh, it might stir up the hornet's nest. I don't know. But it's just a lot of fun to, to talk about. Who shot first, Han or Greedo? I say Han. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're seeing a, a very large, strange six-arm alien that challenges Fett. And of course, even though the alien towers over Fett, both in height and perceivable strength, Fett is one big badass, and he takes down this this uh, this giant creature very easily. And and Fett's always had a very intense, dedicated uh, personality to the mission. Uh, and I got a chance to meet Daniel Logan earlier this year, who is the young Boba Fett that they showed back in the prequels, and uh, he's really the only face that we know of on screen for Boba Fett. And, and I bring that up because uh, in the upcoming movies, it said that Boba Fett's going to make another appearance. He, he actually escaped the Sarlacc pit. I know that's got a lot of fans up in, in Rising going, uh, there's no way that Boba Fett survived. That's a whole other argument in and of itself. But my point is, if you're going to bring back Boba Fett in a movie, at least make the character that you pick to play the part look similar to Daniel Logan because he's the only character that we've ever known in the movies to be the face of Boba Fett. There's been a lot of characters uh, that, and actors that have played Boba Fett, but we've only seen one face and that's Daniel Logan. So respect that. Please, Lucas, please, Star Wars, please, Disney, and I say Lucas being Lucas Story Group, please, somebody in there, respect the fact. I, I know that this character that is said to going to be playing Boba Fett, very respectable actor, but looks nothing like Daniel Logan. All right. I digress back to the book at hand. Um, now, uh, we see a jump cut now where Han and Leia are on a ship. We don't know what ship they're on just yet, but they're discussing the repairs uh, needed for the Millennium Falcon that was uh, damaged in one of the previous books. But Leia informs Han he's not getting the parts because uh, they're in a war. They need all the parts they can get to maintain the Rebel pilots to stay fully functional and armed to defend against the Empire. And... Um, we get a jump cut right now, back to Tatooine, where we find Fett interrogating a male character who divulges the identity of Skywalker, and that uh, the locals gave Luke a weird nickname, Wormy. That's the first time I've ever heard Luke Skywalker called Wormy. Uh, I, in all of the books that I've ever read, I've never heard him called Wormy in the movies. Uh, if you've read some story in the Expanded Universe, which is now Legends, that Luke Skywalker is called Wormy, comment below. I'd love to know if this is a first time we've ever heard Luke called that or if it's happened before and this book is being inspired by one of the other stories that have been previously written. And I, I wonder if we're going to see uh, uh, that play a bigger part in this story because it would be very strange to say that you know Luke had this nickname and not expand on it a little bit further. Don't you think? Comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, and of course, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the character... Uh, pleads for his life after he divulges his information to Boba Fett, going, please, I'm, I'm telling you everything, you, you please let me go, and, and Fett says, sure, and we all know Fett, he's intense, he's not letting this guy get away, uh, and of course, he uh, he uh, uh, is ruthless with the, the escape and, and his exit, and we join back now with Luke and R2 with another uh, uh, scene as they're heading towards Ben's house when uh, Luke and R2-D2 are confronted by some sand people who are pillaging Ben's home. And Luke Saber quickly comes out and he defends Ben's belongings. And uh, then we get another jump cut back to the starship and we find that Han and Leia are on a stolen Imperial shuttle. And just about the time uh, that we are in the middle of another lover's quarrel between Han and Leia, it's predictable. Uh, I hate to say this. I, I'm not excited anytime I ever see Han and Leia talk because I know it's going to be a very predictable conversation. We know where it's going to go because they 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 always fight and bicker at each other. Uh, but uh, Han is is trying to explain to her uh, uh, that he didn't steal the the Millennium Falcon. Uh, he he wanted it in a game of Sabacc. Uh, oh, by the way, if you you know where I could get a a, a deck, a real uh, commercially manufactured deck of Sabacc cards. 
Drop it in the comment below. I've been looking for a deck of Sabacc cards. If you're not familiar with Sabacc, is it, it's a card game played in the Star Wars universe. It's kind of like 21, but it's got some different rules. Uh, so I, I'm looking for a deck. If you know where you can buy these, let me know. I, I know there's plenty of templates out there uh, the online that you can download and make your own cards, but I, I'd like to buy some that are manufactured. I just think that they would look really cool to have a deck. Uh, I digress. Yeah, I keep going off tangents on things that this book has got my my mind flowing all over the place there's so much cool things happening in this book uh but anyways uh, they quickly find themselves surrounded by some tie fighters uh and just about the time that leia begins to transmit some stolen clearance codes to make sure that they can uh, make their passage without getting attacked uh han panics he doesn't believe that the codes are going to work and uh does a knee-jerk reaction and uh, then they find themselves in a fight with the TIE Fighters, and then the lover antic uh, continues, um, and it, it's expected between Han and Leia as they head down to shake off the TIE Fighters to an unknown planet, and just about the, that time, uh, there's a strange ship that appears. Uh, look at it right here. D do you know what this ship is? I, I couldn't find uh, what this ship was uh, called anywhere in the Star Wars Encyclopedia. Uh, so if you know what the ship is called, uh, comment below. I believe that they men made mention to it in one of the previous comics, so I'm going to go have to go back and reread some of those comics. But if you know it off the top of your head right now, comment below in this video comment thread. And, uh, of course, we have the pilot that's inside of there that's been tracking their every move uh, in the Mansua Nebula. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to find out eventually who that person is. And then a jump cut back to Tatooine and Luke is uh, scared off the Sand People. For now, we know from when Luke was rescued by Obi-Wan Kenobi in Episode 4, A New Hope, uh, and Luke came uh, uh, to, to see who Ben was, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, made mention that Sand People are easily scared off, but they come back quickly and they come back in greater numbers. So Luke's got to hurry up and, and, and get to work at Ben's house and find what he's looking for. Uh, so we see that as Luke's emotions are very mixed right now. He's filled with anger, frustration. It's all the Vader DNA that's running through his veins that he doesn't even know he has yet. But it, it's always interesting to know, you know, we, we know where the story's going, but it's interesting to see this play out in Luke's character. Uh, and of course, Ben's house is a mess and they continue to look around when all of a sudden a flash grenade uh, gets thrown in and it goes off and and Boba Fett has closed the trail on Luke Skywalker. By far the best scene in this book whatsoever. And uh, it's where we leave off with Luke in the crosshairs of Boba Fett. And the next issue is set to hit the stand uh, June 3rd, 2015. Get this series in your pull list. Like I said, it is canonical. So there are elements in here that you do not want to miss. This is the standard cover. This is the variant cover for number five. Uh, get all of the variant covers. Get all of the books in the series as well as the other books that are being released. You've got the Kanan Jarrus. Uh, you've got the uh, Darth Vader. You've got the Princess Leia. You've got the uh, um, Lando Calrissian series that's coming up. Uh, later on this year, we've got a ramp-up series that's going to take us into uh, the Episode 7 movie. So just a lot of great books out this year for us hardcore Star Wars fans. Uh, comment below. I'd love to know what you think about this book, if you have it in your series, or what you thought about this video review. Uh, Definitely give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you didn't like it, I don't know what to tell you because it's my review, it's my thoughts, it's my first impressions. So, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's real simple to do so. Go over to the main YouTube channel page, click on the subscribe icon. After you do that, do that. go to the right of that, click on the gear icon. It looks like a cogwheel. Enable the updates. That's going to inform you when I produce and publish a new video here on my channel. And if you already are a subscriber of my channel, thank you so very much. I appreciate you being right there so I can be right here. And of course, a special thanks out to my patrons, my Techertainment Elite. And if you want to become part of the Techertainment Elite and get some perks and rewards along the way, you can do so over at patreon.com 
forward slash Scotty D online. Watch the video, read what the campaign's all about, see what the perks are. Those perks and rewards are always going to evolve for the better, never for the worse. So definitely check out patreon.com forward slash Scotty D online and become part of the tech entertainment elite pledge your monthly support. And I do thank you for being a patron of my channel until the next video here on my channel, whether it be the comic book series or any other video. Thanks for watching. Be good to each other. We'll see you next time. Web world. May the force be with you.